Chris Hager with us right now, the New Hampshire GOP chairman. Chris, good to have you. Um, Donald Trump was saying, in a way, New Hampshire isn't really representative of all the other states that are having uh, primaries and caucuses, if you include Nevada, caucus state, uh, in, in that, you know, Democrats can vote and, and independents can vote. Technically, Democrats can't vote unless they have changed their party affiliation, and they would have had to done so in early October. Having said that, independents can and unaffiliated voters can, and that is something that would presumably benefit Nikki Haley. How do you see it? Well, uh, thank you, Neil. Thank you. But in 2016, we've had the same rules in effect for over 40 years. And in 2016, you can argue that having the undeclared voters uh, be able to take either ballot helped Donald Trump. And so, you know, the rules are the same. Um, it's, it's a great process because 40% of our electorate are undeclared. Many of them are habitual Republicans, many habitual Democrats. And so, you know, the crossover is not as big as someone might think. Uh, so those traditional Republicans who decide to, to register as undeclared, we believe they're going to vote in big numbers uh, next Tuesday. I'm predicting a record turnout of about 300,000 hmm. um, uh, votes in our primary. Democrats maybe half as much because, you know, President Biden decided to skip New Hampshire completely. And so uh, the voters will decide. And as far as the polls go, you know, just recently in 2022, we had a Senate primary where all the polls minus one outlier said that it was going to be a double digit uh, win for one person. Election night, it was within one percentage point. So up here in New England, you know, New Hampshire, sometimes people don't necessarily give the pollsters, you know, the full story. Yeah, I think a lot of your residents, uh, feisty as they are, love to mess with them, and I can't blame them. But, you know, um, I'm curious, Chris, that the fact that the president won't be on a ballot, uh, I don't know political history nearly as well as you, I don't remember a time where an incumbent president has uh, not been on a New Hampshire ballot um, running for re-election, let alone election. What do you think? Yeah, um, I, I believe it was back in uh, Lyndon Johnson uh, okay. time period where, where there was a write-in uh, that didn't do as well as they expected. And, you know, we all know that Lyndon Johnson didn't run for re-election. Right. Um, be, because he well, was he did challenged, win and he didn't did, do so well. He, he barely won, and of course, he, then yeah. he opted out in 1968 after that yeah. pathetic showing. You're quite right. right. But, you know, that's a very good way yeah. you frame that, Chris, because some are interpreting that as maybe another Johnson moment here. It was in March of that year, 1968, that uh, LBJ famously said he's stepping out of the race because of that uh, poor performance. I'm just wondering whether Joe Biden risked the same counterattack, just opting not to even participate at all. I think he does. And, you know, part of that is also goes to his health and questions about his health, his yeah. ability to campaign and not coming to New Hampshire and doing any retail at all. You know, it makes people question whether or not he is up to the job. And so I think it's going to hurt him definitely in November, should he be on the ballot. But our predictors here in New Hampshire, our political uh, Republican uh, folks, don't think he will be on the ballot. They think that it's already in the planning to yeah. have him replaced. And it kind of makes sense if he's not uh, not going to play in the primary. But uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, it's, it's a long way between now and November. But um, um, that's our prediction that Joe Biden will not be on the ballot. And uh, whoever the Republican is will be running against the ghost of Joe Biden. It is wild. Uh, you know, um, up until I think early October, Democrats had the chance to switch or go unaffiliated and, 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 and participate in what would be the Republican uh, primary. I, I think a few thousand did that, but as you said, uh, maybe 300,000 will participate in this primary, which is triple the number who did in Iowa. So obviously that would be a much more substantial showing of, 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 of participation, but I'm wondering the role of those former Democrats then and, and what they might have on the state. That's a relatively small number of that number, 1%, but what do you make of it? Yeah, so we think that that number was uh, uh, close to 4,000 okay. that switched. And in a normal year, normal year, you, you have people switch. Um, and people have been drifting towards the Republican Party recently. Um, so, you know, part of that could have just been natural, natural movement. The other part could be them, try, some of those uh, Democrats trying to play in the Republican primary. But overall, we've seen memos from the Democrats asking their people to vote in their primary. And in particular, 
there's a, the write-in effort for Joe Biden. And mm -hmm. I kind of compare that to political Stockholm syndrome. Yeah. Somebody who doesn't want your vote, doesn't want a campaign, but then his cabinet secretaries come up in the gray area of the Hatch Act, uh, essentially campaigning for him. So it's just another example of the confusion of the Biden administration. They don't know if he's running, not running, right in, not right in. At the end of the day, I don't think he's on the ballot in November. I don't think it could take another four years of this physically. Well, we shall see. Uh, but again, it does send a mixed message to uh, New Hampshire voters. We'll see how uh, this all factors out, Chris. Great seeing you. Thank you very much. You too. Thank you, Neil.